Today, I'm gonna peel back the surface layer of classic Sonic games and take a look at what they're hiding. And trust me, there are some insane and sometimes outright bizarre things going on behind the scenes of these games you've been playing for years. And I'm taking you along for the ride, so let's go see what these games are hiding. So you may or may not know that I have extensive knowledge about how these original games work. And using this otherworldly knowledge, along with some help from Devon Reef, I have developed a Lua overlay script which shows us exactly how these games are functioning behind the scenes. Yeah, everything. So here's the overlay in action. The main things you have to focus on are the hitboxes for objects detecting each other and the terrain sensors which are for checking for solid ground. There's also the terrain itself and solid objects. Welcome to Hitbox Theatre. One of the funnest things this overlay lets you do is see all the ridiculous hitboxes they've been hiding from you all this time. Let's start simple. There's not much going on in a motorbug's tiny brain. But you know what isn't tiny? It's hitbox. Hitboxes are always centered on the object's position, though hitbox sizes vary a lot. Sometimes they are larger than the object, such as this, but sometimes they're smaller, much like with the bumper. Yep, bumpers aren't solid. Even though they do repel you, they simply have this small hitbox. Here's the hitboxes for the Green Hill Zone boss. Yep, yeah, pretty much what you expect, but did you know when you hit a boss, there's a short period of time where the hitbox simply vanishes? <laughs> okay, here's our first kind of awkward hitbox. It's the right size, but it's a little off center, isn't it? Definitely not the worst offender we're gonna view today though. <laughs> Look at this boy. Notoriously hard to attack. But did you know that the hitboxes don't even move up and down with the body? That's because the up and down motion is purely an animation and is not actually a movement of the segment objects. But forgive the game a little bit because this actually makes it much easier not to hit the body on accident when jumping on them. Man, those, those spike bridges are always a pain in Green Hill, aren't they? Well, not as much as you might think, actually. The areas that damage you are extremely far spaced and the hitbox is very fair. You have a lot more space to roam than you might have initially pictured. Yeah, the big rings in Sonic 1 don't have a square hitbox, which is just bizarre. Check out the hitbox for the Labyrinth Zone Spear as it extends. Due to the way the game is programmed, all hitboxes have to be centered on the object's position. So here they simply use the fact that a spear will always be on a wall to very easily just extend the hitbox as needed. The final boss of Sonic 2 is composed of two robots, one of which is composed of two hitboxes. One small one which hurts you and another which you're able to attack. Once you see these, it's really easy to figure out where you can and can't hit it. Though while he slides, there's no red hitbox. And while he rolls, there's only a red hitbox. The big Death Egg robot is absolutely littered with hitboxes and only a couple of them are attackable. It's easy to see why this boss could be tough when you realize that contact with any of these red hitboxes is instant death. The one time a hitbox can be off center is when Sonic crouches. It gets squashed a bit, making crouching a good way to avoid attacks. However, when spin dashing, the game considers you standing up again and your hitbox re-emerges. But here you are more or less invincible while doing so, so maybe that's a benefit. Oh boy, these. If you've ever played Sonic 2 for any decent amount, you'll have grown to despise the shell cracker enemy. You try so hard to avoid their attack and destroy them, but it never works and they always manage to get you. Well, here's why. Every segment of the shell cracker's arm has an enormous hitbox. And to be clear again, these red hitboxes cannot be attacked. They just damage you. This is for sure a mistake on the behalf of the developers and they forgot to have the arm segments disable their hitboxes. And instead they all have the same hitbox that the claw has. This leaves a grand total of half the body available to attack at any given time. And Sonic also has to make it over this corner. It's ridiculous and it's very unfair. Everyone who is well versed with classic Sonic knows that you can crouch and survive the attacks of the chemical plant boss in Sonic 2. Well, if you don't know that, yeah, you can. But why is this possible and why doesn't it work for Tails? Well, first, let's just watch this play out with the hitboxes turned on. Did you notice what's wrong here? Yeah, that's pretty mad. The Blob's hitbox never ends up touching Sonic because Sonic's hitbox is smaller when crouched. Earlier in this video, I mentioned how hitboxes are always centered on an object's position. Well, this one's no different. It's just that its position is completely off center. So is this deliberate or not? Here are the best reasons for and against this being on purpose. The terrain sensor for the Blob is placed correctly. 
they would have had to very knowingly extend this sensor to the bottom of the sprite to ensure that the blob hits the ground when needed. It also flips around as needed to remain aligned with the container. And a lot of people would say it's deliberate because, I mean, look at it. It's so incredibly different from anything else, it must be deliberate. Alternatively though, you have to wonder, if they deliberately made the hitbox small and high up, why would they also have it off center horizontally? There's no practical reason for that, and trust me, it doesn't make it easier on them. Also, and I think this is the biggest reason why it must be a mistake, the attack still hurts Tails. Yep, Tails hitbox is smaller than Sonic's, so it doesn't even change when crouching, so it's actually slightly bigger than Sonic's crouching hitbox, and he gets hit regardless. That to me does not sound like a well thought out mechanic, and that my friend sounds like a blunder. You know, I feel for these developers. It's not their fault the hitboxes are whack. I kept knocking stuff over on my desk thinking I was clumsy, but I ported my Lua script to real life. And check it out. That is the worst hitbox I've ever seen. Why was I built this way? Did you know that as slope focused as Classic Sonic is, not all slopes are created equal. Every so often in Sonic games, you'll find these sloped objects. These are in fact objects and use totally different collision methods to actual terrain. Most notably, there is absolutely no angle data whatsoever. On one of these slopes, you will not slow down walking up it or speed up when rolling down it or even jump at an angle. Check out these two ramps. <laughs> What's the difference? Well, in Sonic 1, you fly off like this. And in Sonic 2, you fly off like this, straight up. How is that possible? The end is clearly not straight, and the last terrain tile is not even a flat block. So after all that talk about object slopes not having angles, surely terrain tiles must all have angles. Well, actually no, not all tiles have angles. Some tiles are flagged to be special. Rather than set Sonic to a specific angle, these special tiles will only snap Sonic to the nearest 90 degrees of his current angle. And that's exactly what this last tile of the Sonic 2 slope does. Time for some just general weird stuff, stuff you might not expect. What if I told you every time you jump, the game lags for an entire frame? Well it does, the frame you press the button, not only does Sonic move down and stay touching the floor, yeah, he does not move upwards at all. He also does not move forwards at all. So you could be running at full speed, press jump, and for one frame, you won't move forward at all. The game literally exits the entire routine for the character that frame. Now you might be tempted to think that this was some kind of attempt at adding an anticipation animation for the jump, but there is no chance a single unnoticeable 60th of a second frame of pausing was deliberate. It was most likely a quick and easy fix for something else when leaving the floor. Classic Sonic levels are made out of chunks, and sometimes the available terrain chunks just aren't enough. In Sonic 1, sometimes the game will sneak in objects to be used as terrain. If there's a hard edge and no way to fix it with the available chunks, Green Hill will layer on objects which act as both visual decoration and solid walls to stop Sonic running through. Marble and Labyrinth will straight up add entire new sections of the zone using objects. Ah, uh, look at the lush, grassy hills of Green Hill. Now what if I told you that they held nasty, horrifying secrets? Ew. Oh no. Oh god. What is this? Oh, these are the solid tiles that Green Hill has been hiding from you all this time. Pretty crazy. Now this is kind of a part two to those false wall objects in Sonic 1. So I'm jumping here and Sonic keeps stopping. When you jump at this corner specifically, it's like there's some kind of force field preventing you from touching it. Well unfortunately, the false wall object collision actually extends a little past the sprite, which is usually helpful to stop Sonic passing through corners, but here it creates a little bit of an issue. Sonic has a few little sensors which allow him to check the terrain around him. You may notice that only two pixels are looking for the floor at any given time. And this little fact opens us up to a few bugs. Have you ever noticed when climbing up to a corner like this, Sonic gets a little weird at the edge? I mean, he's literally inside the edge. Well, now we can see why. Once one sensor drops, the other picks up the slack. It's not just corners that can slip between Sonic's feet sensors, entire ledges can. This is pretty spectacular. Sonic's sensors only find the floor when he's already in it. It would be impossible for me to easily explain why this happens here, so for those a little bit more familiar with how things work, here's an explanation you can read. Bugs related to slipping through solid things can also occur with how solid object collision works. And to be clear, objects don't care about sensors, they just care about if two boxes are overlapping then just pop them out. 
I used to do this all the time as a kid. This is only possible because Sonic will slip over the edges of any solid object if his centermost pixel is not directly above it, without fail. So in theory, if there's a single pixel gap between two objects, Sonic can get in there. If you want the overlay for yourselves, then find it and instructions of how to use it in the description. Try playing an overlay only mode. Ooh. 2000 likes and I'll make a follow up with Sonic 3 secrets. Now if you don't mind, I'm gonna try and sort this out somehow.